Oh, got him, got him, nice. Nice. Oh, I got him. Hey, we found him. Oh, got him, got him, nice. <laughs> nice. All right, what to do now? Now, I don't know what we're gonna do when it goes around this corner. In this video, you're gonna see an on the water report on, on a really a tough conditions day that, that started off a little bit slow, but actually ended up being a, an absolute blast, got into a lot of action right after a significant cold front. I, and I felt like I had a lot of pressure on this trip for two reasons. Number one is we had an insider club meetup. Darlene Schumann uh, scheduled a meetup. It was in Tampa Bay. This was, it was really cool to go out and meet a lot of insiders. And the game plan was to get out there early, just, just socialize, get to know one another, and then go out and fish and then compare results. So I felt a lot of pressure as one of the owners of the company that, hey, I have to produce. If I don't catch anything, I'm gonna look like a total chump in front of these members that showed up, some hardcore members. And then number two is I actually had uh, Barry, who's one of our, our staff members, on my first time ever fishing with him. And I also didn't want to look like a chump in front of him. So I had a lot of pressure on a, on a really tough situation day. And so I'll walk you through the trip and talk about the decisions that finally let us actually have a really fun day on the water. So the initial game plan was to get out there and target some deep water with some small jigs. I had little shrimp jigs just bouncing the bottom in the deepest water possible. That's usually where the fish are holding out. First spot was a total bust, not a single strike, and I was starting to get very nervous, but we moved over to a different spot, spot number two, and that's where we finally started to get some action. Here's the first catch. All right, we didn't get skunked. This is one of those days where it's a feat just to catch something. So this was a nice pocket of, of fish here. We, we were getting a good amount of action, just slow bouncing these jigs. However, a lot of the action was just ladyfish, right? Which really was not the uh, the species we were targeting. It's, hey, it's better than nothing though. So we, okay, step number one, we finally found some action and we realized, okay, these little small shrimp jigs were getting some good results. So we started pushing further back into the creek, looking for some other deep pockets. And this is where we started getting into some snook. Ooh, there we are. Oh, that was a better fish there, right on the point. So I missed that good fish a little bit shallower and so then started targeting up closer to the mangroves looking for some more snook and so I actually had one on for a while it ended up jumping off my GoPro batteries had just died and here's the next one that you can see I'm skipping up under this mangrove and the Ooh, snook were hitting right on the shade line oh I think we got a little snook yep new speed oh got off again can't keep him buttoned it seemed like as we went further up into the creek, we kept getting more snooks, so just kept pushing forward and got into some pretty narrow territory. And here's where we started seeing some tarpon rolling, which was really cool. And they were basically going away from us. So we literally kept going to as far as we possibly could, hoping that we could catch up to them. And finally we did as soon as the boat got grounded on this mud bank. Oh, okay. I think I just saw one roll right there. Yep, there they are. Oh, see the bubbles kind of close to your thing. So a lot of times they just like a straight retrieve. Oh, got him, got him, nice, nice, oh, <laughs> oh, we got off, hey, we found him, how freaking awesome was that, oh my gosh, <laughs> the nub, the power for a nub lure did it again. This was a unique situation, the fact that we were totally grounded, but we were casting up to a turn, it got deep at the turn of the creek, and there's tarpon going back and forth, and we just had to wait on them to come back. Oh, oh, another one hit. Another one hit, dude. I saw it. One more cast. Oh. All right, this could be it. Oh, oh, he just hit it. Oh, my gosh. Missed the third one. So this clearly was not my day for getting some good hook sets. I jumped off multiple snook and now I'm missing these tarpon strikes. I think I was just trigger happy. So I finally said, okay, let's just go ahead and relax and give a little bit of time before the hook set. And here's where I got a nice one. Whew. Oh, got him, got him. Nice. <laughs> nice. All right, what to do now? Now, I don't know what we're gonna do when it goes around this corner. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, this is so awesome. All right, I finally got a hook to stay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, no. So that one unfortunately got off as well, but that was just a thrill, right? These tarpon, they're just so much fun. It's such an exciting fish. Stayed here for a little bit longer and realized these tarpon started getting a little bit smart, and so they wouldn't come all the way to this far end. And we decided to see if we can go over this hump and get after it. All right, we position ourselves better and they just came back. Let's see if we can get one. 
while having a good angle at it. Oh, I got him. First cast. <laughs> nice. Oh, it just came off again. So the bad news is I couldn't keep these fish dialed in. The good news is I had the, the lure and the retrieve dialed in and these fish just kept hitting. It was so much fun. Got him. There we are. This might be a snook. Oh, that's a tarpon. Nice. Heck yeah. Got it? Yeah, little, oh, there's a bigger one next to it too. Whoa, oh, got off again. So after that, I just realized, okay, this, this lure was dead on. This is the PowerPron USA nub lure. This is just a small little profile lure and Barry's was just using a little bit bigger one. He's using a full PowerPron USA Junior. And so now we went ahead, let's go ahead and get Barry set up with, uh, with this exact one. It was clearly uh, making an impact. And sure enough, two casts later, Barry's hooked up. Nice, nice, he's on. There he is, <laughs> Barry's got the tarpon. Nice. Come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> nice. Nice. Nice recovery. Whoa. Come on. Come on. I jumped in. Oh, I'm sorry, man. It just, <laughs> it literally just broke off. So that was the last cast we had, and I felt so bad. I just fumbled on that tarpon grab. I, I feel so guilty that Barry didn't get a picture that was his very first tarpon ever, but I still like feel horrible about it. So Barry, sorry about that. Next time we'll get your picture. I uh, just wanted to talk about the, the key lessons learned from this video and I'll talk about the equipment used at the end. So lesson number one is that even, even though there's a significant cold front where there's an extreme temperature change, I'm talking like 15 degrees or more to get to really cold weather, there's, there's still gonna be some fish feeding. And, and actually, if you follow, again, that 90-10 recipe that we've been talking about, that recipe can actually lead to some really fun fish catching action. That was a really good, a really good trip. In spite of me just dropping the ball with everything, I couldn't keep a fish buttoned and I fumbled on that tarpon grab. It was still a blast. I had an absolute blast out there. And so, so don't let some bad weather, um, you'll keep you from going out and trying because it's worth a shot. Lesson number two is just how much these little juvenile tarpon seem to like this little small lure, just this little small, this is a power prone USA nub this is the USA Junior shrimp, and I tear off about an inch and a half of it, so it's a small little piece of plastic, just swimming, just a straight retrieve through these canals. They're all over it. This has been shockingly good. And so if you see a bunch of small tarpon, make sure to have a nice small profile lure like this and give it a straight retrieve. They'll just totally smack it. And so speaking of tackle, here's the setup I was using this trip. And we'll start with the most important. So the rod is number one, always the most important. This is the slot machine rod. It's a 7.6 rod, medium power, fast action tip, just a, a very, it's just a high modulus rod where you can feel everything. I absolutely love this thing. This has been great. Um, as far as the reel, 2500 Daiwa BG MQ. Excellent reel, 2500 is plenty strong enough for, uh, for pretty much all inshore, inshore species. So I love this put 10 pound braid on it. This is the, uh, the J braid eight grand. And then for the leader, I was going with the 20 pound Andy Mono. As for lures, I used two this trip, just two. And uh, number one was the Power Prawn USA rigged on a Haas weedless football jig that was covering the deep water, right? I love this combo uh, between the Power Prawn USA and the football jig where I can now cover deep water, deep structure while being weedless, right? This, this hook point goes flush with the lure. It, you get the hookups, you don't get the weeds, which is really, really important. And then, as I mentioned before, as soon as we saw those tarpon, I switched over to the nub, and this was getting the action, and Barry was using the full shrimp with a, with a heavier jig head, and then at the end, he switched this exact combo with the Power Prone USA Junior nub style, rigged on the Haas football jig, one eighth ounce, uh, one eighth ounce jig head. So as you can see, right, you don't have to have a whole ton of equipment, just some small jigs and bouncing along the bottom. After these cold fronts, those fish are gonna be lethargic, holding down low, and so it's important to get down there right in their face. And then for these tarpon, once you see those, for whatever reason, just get a nice small lure that has just a good glide in the water, and, uh, and you can have a whole lot of fun. Any questions at all about this report, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.